Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about the Prusa XL again. I've made a couple videos about the Prusa XL in the past and figured I should do a Q&A because there's been quite a few questions about the XL, so I figured that's what this video would be about. First things first is about stringing and the 0.6 millimeter nozzle back there. As a lot of people have been saying just switch to a 0.4, though I wouldn't do that because that's one of the major advantages of the 0.6 is that you can print a lot faster and even if it did reduce stringing, which it probably would, then I wouldn't do it. But on a good note, the Prusa XL has actually had a lot less stringing than when I initially made the first two videos as the new firmware update has substantially helped. With even with the same filament. This filament was actually the filament I had the most issues with and as you can see there's really not much stringing and this is like directly off the printer. Just printed it today. So yeah stringing isn't really an issue anymore and I'm glad to see that resolved. Okay so the next question is about the linear rails right here. Uh, the question was did you feel the need to degrease the linear rails and to answer that honestly no. I have also not really done any degreasing <laughs> or done any greasing to make them run better and smoother with any of my printers. I probably should with some of the Prusa Minis, but the Prusa XL hasn't had any issues along that part. Though there is a couple issues with this rod that maybe I should do it because every once in a while it'll make a squeaking noise, but that's about it. The second part to this question was, can you measure the back distance of how much space you'll have? And yes, let's go do that inside. Okay, so pretty much looking at this, it looks like the spool is what you're gonna need to judge it on. As you can see, there's also about that. It's about as far back as that. So looking at this, you can see that that's an extra about three inches. I think this is inches, unfortunately. Don't have metric. Uh, but yeah, it looks like about two feet in total, except there's also that, so you're gonna have to add probably 26, 27 inches, I'd say. Yeah. Okay, so we're back with the next question. The next question is, what filament do you use? And do you use Prusament? The answer to that is no, I do not use Prusament. I actually mainly use Matter Hackers filament, and recently I've also been using some Elegoo filament, as it's cheaper and I actually really like the looks. This one in particular right here is Matter Hackers Shiny Filament, which is usually more stringing, but like I mentioned in the beginning, it's actually not much of an issue anymore. Moving on, the next one is less of a question and more of a statement, and they were just saying how it's crazy how the Prusa XL doesn't have an enclosure. And yes, well, it doesn't have one right now, it does look like Prusa will make one, at least in the early draft or promo videos, they originally showed at least a draft shield. I know that's not full enclosure, but yeah, they were mentioning how you probably won't be able to print any other materials, and I've done flex and PLA. <laughs> Granted, those aren't amazing tests. I haven't actually done anything with PTG or nylon or any of that sort of stuff. I'm thinking about maybe doing it, but most of my projects don't really need it, so yeah, I've been fine with it. Okay, now moving on to some of the more recent clips. This one actually involves a clip where I showed a failed print in the three month review video and they said it looked like a layer shift. And yeah, it does look like one, but ironically I've only had that issue twice and I'm still not sure if that was a firmware slicer bug because I reprinted the same thing, no problem. So yeah, still have no idea what caused that one. Also that was before updating the firmware and I haven't seen anything after updating it. So the next question revolves around the PTFE tube up here. They were wondering if it's possible to shorten it, and yeah, that's actually an interesting question because you can actually just straight up remove this as there is a filament sensor right here. This is like the main filament sensor, but then there's another up here by the nozzle directly where the filament leads in. I've actually removed the filament, this PTFE tube entirely and printed just so that I could use some of the wasted filament instead of having to worry about the large strand that it leaves. And yeah, so it is possible. Do I think it would be a good idea? Maybe. I really do like the idea of mounting a filament roll up here, removing the PTFE tube, and then just having it print that way, because then you don't have to end up with that large amount of wasted filament that you get every time the spool runs out. They were also wondering if it was possible to mount like the second tool head right here in the fourth tool head slot. And I think that would actually work looking at it back here. 
I think you would just slide it over. Yeah, because there's a screw right here. You could definitely do that. It's just, I'm not entirely sure why you would do it. He was saying so that you could have chains, I think. I don't know why chains, but something to make it actually move better or something like along the lines. Whether the software would support it, I'm not entirely sure, and I'm probably not gonna try that one. Okay, now we're going to be moving on to some of the new things with the firmware. As the newer firmware has actually had a lot of the problems I was talking about in the last video been resolved. And this is fantastic because this is one of the things I like about Prusa is they actually continuously update their printers and they listen to feedback when it's given to them. Also, it's worth mentioning that the firmware version that I am on at the time of recording is 5.1.2. Yeah, the first thing that I'm really happy about with the new firmware is that you are now able to control what toolhead you are running. Say I slice the print for toolhead one, I can now change it to toolhead number two, and vice versa. I can also unload the filament, which that was available previously, but yeah, this new development where you can actually choose what toolhead before you actually print is great. You could also do this with multi-tool head slice printers, so you can, if it one was this, but you just want to swap them because you have the filament reversed, you can do that too. So yeah, that's great. Okay, so the next feature is one that I am super happy about. It's one that even on the Prusa Minis, I've been really wanting, and they've now added it from the Prusa Mini, Mark IV, and the Prusa XL, so that is fantastic. And this is the ability to cancel certain objects in a print. That being said, the way you do it is kind of clunky as you have to either name every individual piece or you could just hit cancel current, which is my preferred method. I think in the future there would be room for improving this and having a picture and then you slide to select what picture. Granted, I am not entirely sure if the board inside the printer is capable of supporting it, but if it is, I think that would be fantastic. Yo, cop, why are you rolling around? Yeah, look at me, British. Another feature that is really good, and I was kind of wondering why they didn't have it from the beginning, is the ability to remove the wipe tower, so you don't actually have to waste extra filament when doing multi-material prints. Granted, I have not tested that, so let's actually go inside and I'll slice a print real quick, and then I'll let you decide how you think the results look. Okay, so here's the no wipe test, and you can see, da 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 da, it worked. Still kind of stuck, so I guess we'll pop it out. Yeah. Okay. Wow, that's actually. Oh my gosh. Mm, there we go. Okay, right, that's pretty normal. Most of them that I get like that. Also, that supports the little green. Oh, wow. That's honestly a little bit better than I would have thought. So yeah, you officially don't need any wipe tower. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so there's a little mark right there. If I'm being real picky, but... No, like literally, there's like nothing. Well, I guess we're going. So yeah, from all this, you can definitely tell that Prusa is actively working on fixing these bugs and issues that I've had with the Prusa XL and probably a lot of other people. And it's great to see. This is why I like them so much, like I mentioned a second ago. Anyways, the one other thing that I think they could still add as they haven't done it since the last video was the controlling lights. You still can't control the lights very well. They're still very basic settings and I would like to see that. Granted, that is a small one, but those other ones were definitely the big ones. So aside from the lights, another thing that I've also ran into on the newer firmwares and is still there, at least appears to be, is that every once in a while the first layer isn't perfect, and I'm not sure why this is. I had an hour-long support chat session uh, that did absolutely nothing. They basically just said that you can try increasing the temperature, which, again, not sure why that would do anything. I did try it didn't really do much but yeah it seems to be kind of random and occasionally it will work occasionally it won't luckily this isn't a very common occurrence it just occasionally happens and when it does it's really annoying especially if you don't check on the first layer and find out later on that it caused one of your prints to fail and one time it even had my tool head pop off so yeah 
that was kind of strange. To leave it on a positive note and answer the question of whether I would still get it if I could do this over again, the answer is yes. I still would get the Prusa XL because I really like what it allows. I allow, like the fact that I could print really big objects and if I want to, I could print multicolor prints without as much wasted filament, maybe even none, depending on how that result turned out. But yeah, that's the final remark. Hopefully you found this video helpful and answered some of the questions you had about the Prusa XL. If you have one, then you can leave it in the comments. I probably won't answer it, but I may make another video like this if there's a whole bunch of questions or if some major development happens. Otherwise, I'll probably just have updates in the comments if for minor things that happen. Aside from that, thanks for watching and bye. <sighs> Just realized I never actually mentioned these hearts. These will actually be on Etsy. I'm gonna be listing them to see if I could sell them. I'm not entirely sure, but if you're interested, then you can check Etsy. <laughs>